All right, in this video, I want to continue thinking about the binomial distribution, but looking at what the formulas are for the expected value and for the variance. Uh, some of this is going to be beyond the scope of what you'll really be asked to do. Uh, a lot of times you'll just be asked to apply the formulas, and the formulas themselves are pretty simple, but I want to try to sketch out why they make sense, and I hope that's interesting to some of you. So please remember that the whole idea of expected value, and I've got a video on it if you if you want to go back and watch that, the whole idea of the expected value is what you do is you, you add up x times the probability that you get that x. So I should make this an obvious capital letter here. And you add up over all of the x values. What is the outcome times the probability that you get that outcome? So let's consider then we're going to consider a binomial distribution n trials probability p of success so here's what our expected value looks like and we'll see if this gets too nasty we're going to add up over all the possible outcomes x times the probability well we know how to get the probability the probability is just n choose x times p raised to the x times 1 minus p raised to the n minus x. Okay, and So what we're going to do is look at all of our outcomes here. And the x's are really nice. We don't even need to be vague and just say, oh, it's over all the x's. We can be really specific here. The smallest number of x's you could have is 0. And the biggest number of x's you can have is n. So let's start writing out what a couple of the terms look like and see if we um, notice anything about them. So the first term is when x is equal to 0. Well, if x is equal to 0, all of this is just going to equal 0 because you plugged in 0. So let's try to go to the next term when x is equal to 1. So when x is equal to 1, we have 1 times n choose 1 times p times 1 minus p to the n minus 1. Then we have when x is equal to 2. And remember, we're adding all these up. 2 times n choose 2 times p to the second power times 1 minus p to the n minus 2. Next we're going to have 3 times n choose 3 times p to the 3 1 minus p to the n minus 3. And all of that dot, 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 we're going to go up to the last one, n times n choose n, p to the n, 1 minus p to the n minus n. Okay, so what we're going to try to see if there is a nice way for all of this to simplify out. And the way that you can connect all of this together is by expanding out the 1 minus p's here. And so this is the part that I warned you might get a little hairy, but just try to stick with me. What I want you to just watch for a second is what happens as I raise 1 minus p to bigger and bigger powers. So let's look at 1 minus p squared. So that'd be 1 minus p times itself. That's going to be 1 times 1, negative p times 1, negative p times 1, negative p times b, negative p. So we end up with 1 minus 2p plus p to the third power. If I did 1 minus p to the third power, 
sorry, this should be a second power. I lied a second ago. If I did 1 minus p to the third power, it's just another 1 minus p times the answer we just got. So if I multiply that out, the 1 makes a copy of everything I just had, and the negative p makes an almost copy. It just makes the power go up 1 and makes the negatives and positives flip-flop. So we end up with 1 minus 3p plus 3p squared minus p cubed. If we keep doing this process over and over again, we are adding on a copy of everything we had and adding on a copy of everything raised to the next negative p. And it turns out to follow a really nice pattern, which is called Pascal's Triangle. I'm kind of sk skipping over a few steps to try to make this video not, you know, 75 minutes long. But it follows this nice pattern of Pascal's Triangle, where you're taking each of the rows and kind of shifting it and adding it to the row below it. So you can see here, 1 and 1 makes 2, 1 and 2 makes 3, 1 and 3 makes 4. 3 and 3 makes 6, etc., like that. Well, it turns out that these binomial coefficients right here match up with the numbers in Pascal's triangle. And that these terms right here, these 2 and the 3 and all the way up to the n, uh, help match everything up with how we want them. So, after doing all of that, what you're going to end up with is a lot of terms that are all going to cancel out. Let's see if we can write out what some of the terms look like. So this first one, n choose 1 is equal to n. So we have n times p. And then the rest of that all expands out like this. 1 minus n minus 1 times p plus a bunch of other stuff. I'm not going to have enough space to do it here. I'm not going to have enough space to do it here. Let's see. Um, let's see if we can get there by writing out the next piece. 2 times n choose 2 p squared times 1 minus n minus 2 p Yeah. Okay. Each of these shows up with the same expressions over and over and over again. And what ends up happening is everything cancels out except for one thing. The only thing that you end up with at the end of all of this work is NP times 1. Because every other term that you write down gets canceled out because of the flip-flopping plusing at pluses and minuses. So after all of that, and, and I apologize that I'm not going to show each and every one of the steps, but after all of that gets written out, you're going to end up with this formula that the expected value is just equal to n times p. And the way you can interpret this is that when you have a binomial distribution, the outcome you should expect is just the number of trials times the probability of a success. And this is something that probably makes sense most of all just uh, intuitively, like if you're flipping a coin and you want to know flip a coin 10 times, and you want to know the probability, 
that you want to know the expected value, well, you're going to expect to get 10 times a half. You're expecting to get half of them as heads and half of them as tails. So you expect to get five heads and five tails. Or if you're rolling, you know, um, a rolling dice and you're rolling it six times, you're going to expect to get uh, a one, one time. One sixth of the outcomes are going to be ones. Um, so that's kind of the idea there with the expected value. Um, apologies about this proof here because it just got a little bit nastier than what I really wanted to show you. But I was hoping to show you that you can see how the si the positives and negatives are flip-flopping and how the same terms are showing up over and over again. And so everything's canceling out except for that NP. In a similar way, but with just like a lot more algebra, you can show that the variance comes out to be NP times 1 minus P. I'm not going to make an attempt to throw that into a video. So anyway, thanks for watching there. And uh, I will show in uh, one last video some examples of using expected value and variance.